I've spent all week wire wheeling, sanding, cleaning all these parts up. I hit all the parts with some rust converter. It takes any of the leftover surface rust on the metal and turns it black and then sanded all that down with some scotch Brite and I think 220 and then painted everything. I used some wheel paint that I had laying around from Duplicolor to paint these radius arms and the I-beams and the other stuff's painted with some flat black paint just to make sure it's protected um, from you know the elements. We're gonna get these parts put back on the truck. I got new hardware and new bushings for the radius arms. So we'll get the I-beams put on first and the radius arms, the springs and all that stuff. I bought all new springs, all new brakes. So we're basically just restoring the uh, suspension and everything. And this is the 1976 stuff with the disc brakes. So we're gonna have disc brakes on the front and drum brakes on the rear. First thing I wanna do is get the I-beam, whichever one it is, for this side, put in place, get it bolted up on the other side, and then get the radius arm. I also replaced the bushings on the end of the I-beams here. I got everything from Rock Auto and uh, Amazon. Luckily enough, it was all available. So first things first, I gotta figure out which one of these goes on this side. I think it's this one, and put it in place. So I've got the I-beam installed. It's just one bolt on the other side. It's not a big deal. I'm going to get this radius arm going. The, the bracket here for the shop needs to be on the inside. And you would think that this folded side would be out, but it's not. This open side sticks out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get these old bushings out of these brackets. They're pretty crappy. Um, these are the new Moog bushings that I ordered and they don't look the same, but I'm pretty sure they're fine. Um, the radius or the diameter of the hole, they match. So I'm really not too worried about that. I guess when I tighten it down, it'll, these will squish up a little bit and it should fit. If not, then I'll just order the new ones. But for now, I'm going to assume they fit and get started. Put these in place. So there's two washers that come with the kit. There's a cupped washer and then a flat washer. The flat washer goes in the back, the cupped washer goes in the front. Uh, it looks like everything fits. If not, it's the boss's fault. those put on. Now I need to get this I-beam and this bring this arm together. So jack that up a little bit. Radius arm installed. And before I move on, I need to get this radius arm installed. The polyurethane bushings don't compress like I need them to, so I'm gonna have to rig up a strap on the back of the frame and then compress this whole system so I can get the, the nut and the washer on here and get these bushings to compress. So I'm gonna get that done, bolt this up, and then we'll move on to getting the spring installed. I got the radius arm nut tightened down. One thing I like to do to get this compressed because I'm by myself is take a ratchet strap, hook it to the bolt that holds the spring in, hook it to the transmission cross member, and then tighten that down enough to compress this. 
and give me a little bit of room to get that nut started and threaded and then I just tighten it down with the impact gun. It compresses the um, bushings the rest of the way and then we're good to go. One difference I found between the 76 and the 66 is the 66 radius arms have a cotter pin. The 76 do not have a spot for a cotter pin. I kind of like having a cotter pin in there just so the nuts don't back off. So what I'm going to do is get my drill out, drill a hole in here and add a cotter pin. Not that difficult. So let's get this popped off. And what we will do is tighten down this bolt connecting the I-beam to the radius arm and then get the hat put on for the spring, get the spring set in, bolt that down and then set it up in this perch. I made some brackets yesterday to get that spring held in here. So after we get that done, we'll go ahead and put all the bearings, the brakes and everything back together and then repeat that on the other side and get the trucks, well, I was gonna say get the truck set back down on its wheels, but we still have to make the brake lines. So we'll get all this put back together and then we will start plumbing the brake lines. For this operation, I like to use, well, every extension that I have. A breaker bar, and whatever I can do to reach down in the middle of this spring to tighten up the nut that holds it in place. Not fun. And our spring is installed, so I'll get this spring set where it needs to go on this perch. I'll get it clocked in the right manner, which is about here. And then there is a bracket, which I made yesterday. It's sitting over there in primer drying, and that holds this spring into place on this hat. Uh, before I move any further on this point and get this spring compressed, I'm going to go grab the front shock and install that. Don't need you anymore. Okay, what I have here is a Monroe shock just from Advanced Auto Parts. Luckily, they had one local. So this came in pretty quick. In order to get the old ones off, I had to cut the shaft off the top. So luckily, this came with new hardware. Go me. Let's see. Here we go. You. You. Shock is installed. Hook up this tie rod in. So it looks like this tie rod in is gonna give me a little bit of trouble getting in here. I'm not sure why. I'm gonna go take a look at the old one. Okay, I got the steering arm connected. It was just a little tough. You had to get it at the right angle. I guess there's a little bit of a difference between this um, spindle and the other spindle. 
on the way or the height where this connection point is. Luckily, the, the diameter of the hole and the ball joint are the same, so I really don't have an issue there. But you just kinda get this pushed down right and the arm right and the ball joint twisted and then think obviously goes in. Um, I twisted this back and forth, so let me get this tightened down. Just tighten down my hand, so I twisted the steering back and forth and we have no binding. It hits the bump stop, it does not hit the shock. And then we come all the way out and no binding on the arm. So from here, it looks good. There are some minor differences between this one and the um, 66, but it goes together. If there is a problem in the future, I'll just order the new arms for the 76, measure them, make sure they're okay. I do have the old ones, so I might take some measurements and see if there are any differences in the length. I need to get some cotter pins. I ran out, I'm gonna have to put a cotter pin in this guy, drill the hole for the radius arm, put a cotter pin in there. For now, we got the spring installed, the shock installed, and we'll tighten this nut down real quick, and then we can start getting these bearings and everything installed on this spindle. Okay, now that we've gotten the suspension stuff installed, we can move on to the brakes. Um, we need to put this backing plate on and then we can get the bearings packed for, full of grease, put them into the new discs and put all that together and then put the calipers and everything on. I haven't painted the calipers. I'm gonna put them on the truck, make sure everything's good and then I'll paint them after I get everything fitted. After I get this side done, I'll hop over to the other side, put everything together, hook everything up and then we're gonna start running the brake lines. Because I put the dual master cylinder from the 76 on here, I have to plumb all new brake lines. I'm putting a new proportional valve. I'm gonna flare all my ends and make all lines from scratch. So the first thing I wanna do is get all this done and then move on to that because the brake line process is gonna be tedious. So first things first, let's get this freshly painted backing plate on here. Now that that's done, let's grab this new disc. The good thing is a lot of this stuff is still locally available. I sourced all these parts from my local parts store. Only thing I had to do was wait on shipping on a few items. So the first things first, let's take our bearings, get them out of their package. And then I'm gonna grab the wheel. There we go. I'm gonna go grab the wheel bearing grease and pack these bearings full of grease, drop them down in this disc, set them on the spindle, tighten the nut down, and then put the caliper on. Ugh. Okay, got my grease and a rag. What I'm gonna do is put a big old glob of this in my hand and then we will take this bearing and just start packing grease. Good to go on that one. So take the rest of this. If 
Fun job. I don't have a uh, bearing packing device, so just use the old hands. Okay, bearings installed. Now I'm going to grab my seal driver. Grab my seal. Sit down on here. Figure out what size I need. That looks good. Now I just need a hammer. All right, so new bearing, new outer seal. Move on to the next, same process. Some grease in the palm of your hand. Bearing. Pack it full of grease. Seat it, back it off. We now have new bearings and our rotor installed. I need to get some cotter pins, like I said earlier, fresh out. So I will go pick up a uh, various pack of cotter pins and put new cotter pins in all the, all the joints. Okay, now that we have the wheel bearings and rotor installed, I'm gonna move on to getting this caliper installed. I already have the brake pad set on the back here. Uh, there's an anti-rattle clip that goes on the bottom of that pad. You stick that in, drop your front brake pad into the caliper, and then set this caliper. On the caliper, luckily, there is an R. It tells you which one it is. Uh, if you don't have anything like that, then you can always put the bleeder valve pointing up. So we're gonna drop this on here. The F100, Calipers are a little bit different than your uh, typical newer style brake calipers. Um, they lock onto their uh, bracket here with a retaining clip and a spring. This spring is to be driven in from the front here on the bottom. So you want to push your caliper up and you want to get this guy started in here like that. And after you get it started, just take a hammer and where's my hammer take a hammer and then you just drive this guy in you don't have to beat it it goes in fairly fairly easily just tap it in get it in about center and you have a retaining bolt a lot of people lose these fortunately the new caliper came with the new bolt so put that in its place get that tightened down Now that's done, we're finished. The only thing I have left to do is to put this brake line on, but I need to get my bracket put back on the frame here, and then I still have all the hard lines run. So for time being, this is where I'm gonna leave this setup. 
I'm going to get onto the driver's side now and install the I-beam, the radius arm, the new bushings, new spring, and the new shock, and then I'm gonna move on to those lines. So let me get that finished, and then we will go ahead and start bending up our new hard lines and getting those installed on the truck. I had to order a bunch of fittings. If you are going to be putting the 76 uh, master cylinder and disc brakes on the truck, you're gonna have to order some fittings. I don't remember the exact size off the top of my head, but the fittings on the master cylinder for the 76 are different than what's on the 66. So you're gonna have to get those fittings and remake those brake lines down to your proportional valve. If you don't have a proportional valve, then you're gonna need to get one of those as well. So. Let me get started on the other side and then we'll get back to the brake lines. Okay, so I got the other side put back together, put the brake lines on, um, hooked them up to the brackets and everything like that. And then I went ahead and put the wheel back on and lowered the truck back down. Right now, the new bearings obviously are much better than the old one. I can just roll this truck with one hand. So, the next thing I need to do is start running the hard lines from the master cylinder. I haven't done any of that yet. I just had everything disconnected. So now that everything's put back together as far as the suspension goes, and I drilled the hole and put the cotter pin in the radius arm, I can start concentrating on that stuff. First thing I'm gonna do is pull off the hard lines, pull them out from the truck, go ahead and unroll the new line that I have and start making it the right length, get the right bends, putting the correct ends on it and getting those installed. So. I'm gonna start doing that um, and start getting the rest of this thing plumbed. Don't it look nice? I think it looks really good. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is start installing these brake lines from the master cylinder down to the proportional valve. I haven't installed the proportional valve yet, but I am going to install it down there on the frame reel and then go from the proportion valve to each brake. I ordered a set of random fittings. Um, well, they're not random, but a bunch of fittings off of Amazon. They're for a 3 16 line because this master cylinder uses a different size than what came on the truck. Down here, we have the original 3 16 line and fitting from the 66 brake system and then in the master cylinder, I have the correct fittings for the 3 16 line. Now they may be a larger fitting, but the hole in the fitting is 3 16. So all of this is for 3 16 line. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the old lines and the old distribution block down on the frame reel. And then from there, I'm going to mount the new proportional valve and start figuring out where exactly I want these lines and where they need to go. Okay, so we're under the truck and right here is the factory distribution block for the brake system. You have the line coming right here from the old master cylinder and then there are two lines. Yeah, two lines right here going to the front and then this line goes to the rear. We're gonna take this off and we're gonna replace it. So I'm gonna get this guy, uh, this bolt out of here and then I'm gonna snip these lines and um, pull them out and replace them um, with the new stuff. So I th I'm not sure how I'm gonna run the new lines yet. I do like how it goes behind the steering box, but I don't wanna have to take the steering box off to be able to run this line behind it. Um, that seems like the best way to go though. So I may end up just going that route anyway. First things first, let's get this block off here. So we've gotten the brake booster installed, the brake lines made and run. We also put in the proportional valve under on the frame. Took a little bit of figuring out on how I was gonna get these brake lines run. I'm gonna pull you in here in a second and show you exactly what I did. Uh, that pretty much wraps up the brake system. We bled it and got all the air out of the system. The brakes are stopping like they're supposed to. Um, I don't know if I wanna upgrade to a power brake system yet, I'm gonna go with the manual for a little while and see how bad I 
don't stop and then we'll go from there. But I'm gonna walk you guys through the lines, what we made, what we did and how I ran them along the frame and across the back of the um, front cross member. And then we're gonna move on into the next piece of getting this thing back on the road. So what I've done here is I bent up these brake lines with 3 16 um, It's like a copper coated brake line. It's not the steel brake line, a little bit easier to work with. Um, I was able to get the bends I wanted to get and the fittings and the crimps done with the Eastwood crimping tool. So I got these lines and I ran them. I ran them from the master cylinder down here, took a right turn and went along the frame underneath the cab back to the proportioning valve. So I'll walk you down here to the proportional valve and show you what that looks like and how I ran the lines of the truck. Okay, we're under the truck now and what you see here is a bracket that was fabricated and then the proportional valve that was added to the truck. You got the lines that come in here, the front comes in, and then these two lines go up to the front brakes on the driver and passenger side. And then, obviously, the other line goes straight to the back. So I bent all these lines and put everything together and connected them all to the rubber hoses on the back. And then each spot here on the front, we've got this line that comes down here and wraps into that brake caliper and then this guy goes across to the other brake caliper and then all hooks into the factory rubber line mount locations. So that's everything we did for the brake lines. Uh, as you can see here, I ran all my lines along the frame and then under the cab. I'm gonna get some brackets on those to hold them in place, but for now, they're just hanging there um, under their own, I guess, structure. But it works for now. <laughs> And now we're back here at the rear end of the truck where I've run the brake line to the um, rear rubber line and then it comes down and it splits on top of the axle, goes to the driver's side and then over to the passenger side and hooks into the wheel cylinders. So that is the complete brake system for the truck. Everything has been bled, everything works like it should. And now I'm gonna move on to the engine bay and start working on the ignition system. Now that we've gotten the brake system done on the truck, we get to move on to the engine. The next thing we're gonna do is get the spark plugs changed out, the distributor cap, the rotor, and everything that goes along with that. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that the cooling system flows like it should, make sure the water pump pumps. I got a new water pump, a new thermostat and everything, just in case this one doesn't work. It wasn't leaking before when I've started the truck, so I don't think it's bad, but you never know. So the next video is going to be on getting the ignition system all freshened up. I'm going to order a carburetor rebuild kit, get this carburetor off here and get that rebuilt as well. I'd like to hook the choke up and everything like it should and also get a heater core in this truck. So thank you for watching this episode. Catch the next one. And uh, I don't know, hit the like button. There's first, there's second. Let's go ahead and put it in drive. There's reverse.